Let's bring in uh, now uh, former uh, national security advisor for former Vice President Mike Pence, General Keith Kellogg, to talk more about this. So, General, your, your thoughts on that and, and the fact that the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Mark Milley, said we may need to partner with the Taliban in order to go after ISIS-K. I mean, I assume that this would be a case of the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Yeah. Yeah, John. John, thanks for having me uh, to, to you and Sandra there. Look, um, this is, we have an option. We're going to have to work with the Taliban. They won, we lost. After 20 years, uh, they now own the country out there. Now, what's important to understand, though, and this is important for me to say, is that is not as a result of the great work that our young men and women mm -hmm. in uniform did over the last 20 years. They fought magnificently and did well. These are strategic level decisions, decisions from the White House by the commander in chief. And yesterday and the day before and weeks before that, he stood in front of the American people. And John, he said that all of his decisions were unanimous. That means all of his senior advisors agreed to include the military advisors. And that's the reason why I have been so strong on accountability going forward. I said, look, we made the decision to leave 10 percent of the Americans behind. We made the decision to not evacuate all of those who fought alongside of us, those that were understanding the Taliban are executing. And we made that call. We made the call uh, to not expand the perimeter uh, just a few weeks ago when we got on the ground there, even though we found out later we were in, uh, talking with the Taliban, which resulted in 13 great Americans being killed. The mm -hmm. largest uh, loss of life in Afghanistan since 2011. So there needs to be some accountability at the senior levels of how we got into this position. And now that the Taliban runs the country, we haven't got much of an option. I mean, they yeah. own it. Well, we don't. Well, well, let me ask you about that. How, how do you have accountability? Because the one place where you could have accountability would be in the halls of Congress. But Democrats have got no appetite to call hearings into any of this. They, they want to move uh, past it as quickly as possible. So how do you hold yeah. people accountable? Well, John, that's a great point. I think everybody is going to try to figure from the administration, uh, let's move on and find out uh, who's playing football on Saturday and Sunday this week. The accountability is with the senior advisors that he's got. And he's not going to fire anybody, and nobody's going to resign, and that's unfortunate. But some of them should leave. His national security team failed in everything they told the president or advised the president. You know, just a few weeks ago, he said the Afghan army was going to stand. It folded. After 20 years, somebody needs to ask the question, why did that happen? Now, you talk about Congress. There's another thing they should do, because they're marking up the uh, National Defense Authorization Act right now. Mm -hmm. And they ought to have some, a blue ribbon commission. And that commission ought to look at the last 20 years of how we got to today. And one of the things I would say very strongly, do not include, and no one should include, any three or four star general or admiral that was involved in Afghanistan. And I'm talking about Petraeus, I'm talking about McChrystal, mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. talking about Nicholson, I'm talking about McMaster. Any of those people should be involved because they were part of the problem. But we mm. lost a country, a country we fought for in the last for the last 20 years. Don't you think we should uh, at least try to figure out how we lost it? Let me ask you, General, about this phone call uh, on July the 23rd between President Biden and the former president of Afghanistan, Ashraf Ghani. Uh, I guess you could call yeah. him Ghani because he was one of the first to leave. <laughs> in which the president said, "Look, we got to change perceptions yeah. here, whether it's true or not. And if you want U.S. military uh, support to continue, you got to come up with a different plan." Uh, you were in the White House during the whole Vladimir Zelensky controversy and the impeachment yep. process that followed. Your thoughts on this phone call and the conversation that the president had with Ghani? Yeah, look, this is a great it's a great question, John. And I was in I was in the Situation Room when that call was actually being made and heard the conversation. And I later said I didn't think that was a, a, a necessarily a bad call. Now we have a president telling uh, a, a former president of a country with Ghani to try to change the perception, and he goes out in front of the American people and tells them everything's fine. In other words, he lied to the American people. If that's not a, a serious breach of faith with the American people, I don't know what is. I don't think you even compare the two. I think what he did with Ghani, excuse me, what he did with Ghani and what he t told the American people it is of serious consequences, and they need to look at that. But, John, they won't. But I think they should. Yeah, I think you're right on the uh, the, the first point there that uh, maybe they should look at it, but they likely won't. Uh, General Keith Kellogg, always a pleasure. Thanks for joining us today. Yeah.